Hello and welcome back to Try Your Hand. I'm Brenda and I'll be showing you how to make a hand sewn pouch. Hopefully you have picked up your kit by now. Otherwise, all you will need for your supplies are a piece of cloth at whatever size you want it to be. I think the size of my cloth here is about eight and a half inches on one side and then the other side is about uh, 18 inches. Uh, the next thing you will need is some thread, uh, whatever color you'd like. You will also need something to mark your cloth with. The last thing that you will need for this project is a needle. All right, let's get started. The first thing that we are going to do with this project is to mark out the seam allowance with the marker that we have provided for you. I marked out a half inch seam allowance, but you can do whatever size seam allowance you prefer. This is important because these lines we're about to draw not only give you enough room keep the edges from fraying but it also it also gives you a visual as to where you are supposed to sew all right so um i forgot to do something before i pinned which is to mark out the the little area that we're not supposed to sew because once we're done sewing the edges here, what we're going to do is we're gonna flip it inside out. Uh, flipping it inside out will show like the nice, the, the front side, right? The fashion part of the fabric. Um, and it will also hide all of your sewing that we're going to be doing on the edges here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take, you don't really have to measure this, you just want it big enough, this, the, the space here, big enough so that you can you know, be able to stick your fingers in there and like pull the fabric out. So I would say just like, well, I guess you can ch check here, see? You kind of just want it to be in the middle. So I'm doing it two in a two inch wide uh, gap here. That should be big enough for me to stick my fingers in and flip it inside out. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start sewing. I believe we're gonna get, we're gonna provide the string for, or the, you know, the thread for you. Before I teach you how to sew here, I think I need to teach you how to thread a needle. So the first thing that you do is you take your piece of thread at whatever length is most comfortable to you. You make sure that the ends of your thread aren't frayed. Uh, some people do this by licking the end or maybe if you have your, f dip your fingers in some water or something like that and then like I squish the end and roll it. A lot of the time that makes it so that the ends don't fray. Then you will take your needle and then insert uh, your piece of thread through the eye of the needle, which is a little hole at the top. All right, so now that we have our, th our string threaded, um, I have doubled up the thread just to make it stronger. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I do it because I'm always paranoid about th my things falling apart. Then we're gonna just tie a knot towards the end here. Tying a knot. All right, so we're done. We're going to be doing a back stitch along all the edges of this. Um, the reason for that is because a back stitch is a very strong stitch. Um, and considering that these are, you know, this is a pouch, so you're supposed to put things in it, you want a very strong seam. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert at the very edge of your cloth here, we're gonna insert our needle and push through. Push through, you can push through with your uh, thimble. Grab your needle, pull through. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to insert our needle. We're gonna insert our needle inside, but we're not gonna pull it all the way through. We're gonna bring it back up and have it be parallel to the blue line that you made. And then we're going to go through um, the right side so that it's showing. You see what's what I'm doing here? And then we're gonna push through and then pull. So we're gonna pull through. Okay, and now you see that we have this piece here and then our string coming out this way. Now to do the back stitch, we go back to the end of this red piece here, this, ne this last stitch, we will insert like we did before, and then we will again 
push our needle so it's hitting that blue line and then we'll go past where our thread came through and insert the needle a little ways away. You want the stitches to be even, so try and make the spaces here as even as you can. You know, if this, I'm, mine aren't going to be even because I'm not an expert. Um, Yours will probably not be even either. That is okay. You are a beginner, and it's okay if your if your stitches are not perfect. So, and you continue doing that. I'll uh, talk you through it through the back stitch again. Um, so we have our thread like uh, coming out right here. We will go back, insert our needle at the very beginning of the, our last stitch. We will insert, uh, make sure that our needle is, will be able to come out through the other side where the blue line is, making sure that this, this in between your, where your thread came out and where your needle is going to come back out is generally um, the same amount of space as previously. And then you're going to push through and pull. So we're going back. We're going forward, and then we're pulling. Continue doing the back stitch until you get to the corner. So now we are at the corner of our piece. What you can do now is either knot it here and then start again to go this way, or you can do what I'm doing here and just continuing. So now that I'm in the corner, I did my back stitch. But instead of um, going past this line, I just came back out in the same place that I came out last time. So like this, I'll show you here. So again, like a regular back stitch. All right, and then we go in through where we uh, entered last time and then we'll come through again like in the same place that we uh, came up the previous time and essentially that's what I did in this corner I'm going to continue sewing up until this blue line here all right so now we are at the end of our um, see we want to we're right at the end of this part of the uh, sewing process. So we are going to then do as we did over here, go back and then pull and then push your needle through where we began and pull through. All right, and then we will kind of want to do this a couple of times. Just to knot it off. It should be pretty secure, but if you're like me, you can make a little knot if you want. We cut with our scissors, and then we're done with that portion. Now that you have finished the first half of the sewing here, what the next thing that we do is to start off sewing from the dash line that we uh, marked off, like how you started sewing uh, in the beginning. So you just insert the needle from the bottom and then continue on with your back stitch. What we're going to do now is we are going to um, finish off the edges of our piece. Um, so the first thing that we need to do, because what we're going to be doing, is essentially taking our seams and then flipping them inside of each other like this folding them over again like this, and then whip stitching the ends together. If you are feeling ambitious, you can trim off more of the edge off of here than is already on here. I'm not going to do that, um, but we do, need to do, we do need to do some prep before we start that. If you have some scissors, um, you wanna trim off you see, remember where you left those little lines here to tell you where to stop sewing? 
you want to kind of trim those in those areas and then at the end here where it's folded you just kind of want to open it up like that then what we're going to do is we're going to fold in the edges or these seams here in so again we're going to be opening this up and then insert or folding them in folding the raw edges in and then we will we will be folding up like this this would actually be much easier if we had an iron I'm not using an iron for this I don't know why because there's literally an iron over there but it takes too long for the iron to get hot so I'm just going to pin it so I have these pins and then so once you have that edge kind of pinned you can kind of tuck it in as you go along with your fingernails and then just keep on pinning okay so we've pinned one side and you do the same thing with the other side as well but we are not going to pin this here we're just going to leave this open so we are now going to do the whip stitch in order to finish off these uh, edges so we will take our needle and thread and we will go in one side and, a, and pull through then what we're going to do is we're going to move up a little bit and then we're going to just insert our needle just through perpendicular to you know your cloth and then pull through you do kind of at the beginning you do kind of want to make sure that your thread is um going to be sewing on this edge instead of getting caught over on this edge. So you just kind of want to move that loop. Okay, so I'm going to pull out this and then we're going to do that again. So we've pulled through. We will move up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that because that thread's there. But we'll move up a little bit and then just insert perpendicularly and then just make sure that the loop is not going to get caught on the side there and then pull you don't want to pull too hard because then it starts getting all crumply and wrinkly you just want to pull enough where you know it's joined so again move the loop so again we're going to insert that needle perpendicularly and then pull through then we will move up insert needle perpendicularly and then pull so we will continue see that's when it gets caught on the edge you just got to pull it loop through then we will continue to be doing that throughout the entire edge so all of the edges have now been sewn with that whip stitch and what we have to do now is to flip this inside out we did leave a little spot here that's empty or that's not sewn and through this, we're going to turn all of this inside out. Make sure to uh, push out your corners while you do that. So, see, kind of like that. All right, so once you kind of got all those formed corners pushed out, you kind of just shove the rest of your cloth inside out through the little hole. And there you go. Um, what we're going to do next is we are going to then sew shut this um, little opening that we had to flip it inside out. So again, we want to kind of just fold it, fold it so that the, uh, the raw edges are inside of this little like bag essentially that you have. Um, you don't really, you know, it's small enough where you don't really have to pin it. You, all you want to do is you want to take your uh, needle and thread. Again, you kind of want to make a little knot here. And we're going to do, I can't remember the name of this, but I learned this actually in home ec. <laughs> I learned this in home ec. So I'm sure you guys will learn that too because I, I believe it's still required at the high school. You guys are going to be making pillows. So have fun with that. It's invisible, so we want to kind of sew on the inside of these little like lips here. 
so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep the little tail of my needle to be inside of the uh, of this little pouch here. So I'm just going to insert the needle kind of inside of there and kind of make sure that uh, the little tail is kind of stuck on the inside. Ouch. Also, don't do don't poke yourself with the needle. That hurts. <laughs> Again, we cross over to this this side of the lip, and then we insert our needle kind of straight through like that, and then pull through. Then we will go across to the other one, and then do the same thing. It makes it kind of like a little bit of an invisible ladder kind of stitch. So you continue that way. So just right on the inside so that you can't really see it. it. You know, if you can't see it, it's not, you know, a failure. It's fine. Because this is going to, this isn't going to show as much. Now that we are done with that, the next thing that we have to do is to actually make out our pouch. We do that by orienting our piece of cloth so that the short sewn edge is facing you and then the folded portion of the cloth is then pointing the opposite way. Now you want to fold up that bottom edge up about three to three and a half inches. You can mess around with it to see where you like it, although keep in mind that on the front of the pouch we will be sewing buttons and loops as well. So you just want to make sure that the buttons and the loops fit on, on the front side of your pouch. Now I'm going to take my pins and I'm going to pin this closed like this. You know, this is just here to keep it from moving, making sure that when I am sewing the edges here, that it's not going out of place, essentially. It's a little wonky, it's okay. So we will take our needle and thread, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the whip stitch again. If you wanna do the invisible stitch one, you can. I thought that the whip stitch was way easier to do. And then we will sew the edges. We're gonna take, go in the middle, and then insert our needle like that, and pull through. You can push these inside, or you can actually sew you know, go, take your needle inside the pouch and then insert it that way. A lot of people, I think that might be easier to hide these little ends here. But I'm just gonna do that. That worked. And then again, we're doing the whip stitch. So we're taking your needle and again, going up a little bit and then going down perpendicular and pushing the needle through. And then we are going to make sure that it doesn't get caught at the end and pulling. You don't want to pull again. You don't want to pull too hard because you don't want it to wrinkle. Because I think that doesn't look as good. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put on the buttons. Um, when you want to put on your buttons, we are going to put it on this lower half of the little pouch. Um, if you want, you can like close it down to see. Um, where you want your buttons, you won't be getting these buttons. You'll get, be getting some different buttons, I think. Um, but we kind of just want to make it so that it's kind of lower like this. Um, we will be having uh, sewing on elastics too uh, that loop around these buttons. So I think it's better to put on the buttons first before you put on the loops. Just so that you know where the buttons will be. So once you've kind of figured out where you want your buttons, I would suggest taking your piece of chalk or your pencil or whatever and marking where you want them. So once you've marked them, okay, now you wanna sew your button. So we have our thread, we have our button. Putting on my thimble. You don't want to sew on this back because then you'll be sewing closed your pouch. So what you want to do is you want to go inside of the pouch with your needle. So your needle going on the inside. And then from the outside, kind of feel around where, you know, on your little 
blue dot or your marked spot and poke, poke your needle through. Then what you want to do is you want to put your button there so that your button goes on the needle. Then you want to insert it uh, the inside the uh, circle that's across there. And again, this is where you have to be kind of careful not to sew your, your thing closed. You want to pull it, push it through, but only through this layer. So again, push it through, make sure that you're looking on the inside. Make sure that you only have that one side. So then I'm going to try and poke, again, inserting it inside the pouch, the needle, and then trying to find this dot here. So just kind of wiggle around, trying to figure out where that little dot is. Or you can just, there you go. Then pull through and then go in through that side. So again, making sure that I'm not catching the back side. Okay, now you want to do that a couple of more times just to make sure that the button is secure. Okay, so that's the third time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this inside out and I'm going to knot it off. So by doing that I just take a little piece of my of this cloth that's under or behind the uh, the button. I'm going to make a loop and then I'm going to insert my needle inside that loop and pull. I'm going to do that a couple of times just to be secure that these things won't be going anywhere. Okay, and then we do the same thing with our other button. So now we have to figure out where we're going to put our loops. The first thing that I did was to fold down the flap and then figure out kind of where the elastic should be. Um, I did that by measuring with a ruler and then marking with the marker where it is that I was going to sew the elastics. Uh, once I figured that out, I then took out my elastics and then I made sure that I could uh, loop the buttons around. Once I figured out that yes I could, I marked off where on the elastic I was going to sew to make them into loops. After that, I took a needle and thread and sewed and inserted my needle in through one side of the elastic and then through the second part of the elastic. Once I did that, I tried to um, wrap my thread around the two little ends of the elastic before I then started to sew it onto the top pouch area. Once we have that ready, we can now start sewing it on. I insert my needle into the mark that I made, making sure that only the first layer of cloth is grabbed. I then brought up my needle towards the left side of the elastic and then I pulled. After that, I insert my needle over the elastic and in between the two elastics that we have, so inside the loop. And then I brought up my needle back on the, on the right side to the side of the second little elastic and then I pulled. Again, you're trying not to grab the second piece of cloth. So I did this a couple of times. And on the last time, I did go through the second layer of fabric. The reason that we're doing this last is so that one side of the fabric isn't being pulled while the other one is not. And we did it on the last time instead of all the times that we did it, all three times, is because there are less of these stitches being seen on the right side of the pouch. I decided to be a little fancy and make it look a little bit like a cross stitch. You don't have to do that, it doesn't really matter. If you make the stitches small enough, then they don't really show up anyway. So once I finished with that, I brought my needle back up through the wrong side of the fabric, so where my elastic is, and right where the elastic is sewn, I grabbed a little bit more cloth, pulled most of the way through, but not all the way, to make a loop with the thread. Then I insert my needle 
in through the loop and then pulled. So I was making a knot and I did it right under where I sewed the elastic so that we don't see that knot. Then you do the same thing with the other elastic that you have. So if you find it, if you find this to be too loose, you can do what I did, which is secure part of the uh, two elastics that make up the loop up the claw. I decided to do this a little bit more fancy because I started using the herringbone stitch, which is a little bit fancy mostly because it was a new stitch i learned so i went, wanted to practice but you don't have to do that it would be perfectly good if you did a a whip stitch like how we did on the sides of the pouch that would be perfectly fine and that should secure your your elastics as you can see you can use this as a pencil pouch or you can put any sorts of your little goodies in, inside this little pouch. I hope you guys have had a great time sewing these pouches with us. Don't forget to join us on the next Try Your Hand. We're making DIY lip balm and after all this cold, I think we'll need some. Links to sign up for this program and other programs that we have are down in the description. We'll see you next time on Try Your Hand.